Joining us now, Newsmax Senior Editor David Patton, and we hope to be joined by Arizona Congressman David Schweikert before this segment is completed. Oh, and I'm glad to hear now that we do have my, uh, well, my one-time competitor turned colleague, given the vagaries of, of politics. Uh, David Schweikert, it's good to have you, uh, and it's also good to have David Patton right here. Uh, David Schweikert, Congressman Schweikert, let me turn to you first. What is the latest you are hearing on the situation? I understand uh, new transitional leadership, or at least interim leadership, is on the job in Phoenix today. That's absolutely correct, J.D., and it's always a joy to get the chance to speak to you. Um, be prepared. There's going to be more and more of this as, as the investigation gets deeper and deeper. The, the one thing that's happened since the last time you and I spoke is the amount of data, documents, individuals, both current and past employees from all over the VA system, you know, from coast to coast, who are reaching out to their congressional members and actually to the VA Oversight Committee here in Congress and bringing us information. Now we've got to do that tough work of grind through it, vet it, make sure it's accurate, and then use it to fix what's wrong in the system. Let me turn to David Patton uh, here in our studio. From your perspective, editing these stories, seeing what's going on at Newsmax, your background as a journalist, will this outrage really convert into policy changes because it seems that bureaucratic inertia often overtakes all these calls after a certain amount of time. So I guess two answers to that, J.D. On the one hand, how could it not? Well, we already know that we have some 40 uh, individuals who are on that waiting list who uh, passed away while they were waiting for medical care, American veterans who risked their lives for this and they come back here and they get this kind of uh, treatment, it's absolutely an outrage. I think everybody can agree on that. But your other question, will anything be done? Secretary of Defense, former, former Secretary of Defense Robert Gates says that next to the Pentagon, the most obdurate, least transparent, most difficult bureaucracy in Washington to deal with is the VA. And you're talking about an unbelievably big bureaucracy. It's scattered all over the country a budget of over $150 billion requested in 2014, some 1,700 hospitals. I'm not sure what the tool is to actually get into that bureaucracy and institute reforms. Well, uh, David Schweikert, Congressman Schweikert, uh, calling in by phone, you told us during your last visit you were going to be sitting down with, with veterans in your district to hear from them. I'm interested in that input and also, of course, uh, the chairman of the uh, Veterans Affairs Committee, Jeff Miller, offered uh, a bill that uh, would actually allow the Secretary of Veterans Affairs to fire uh, ineffective employees. Now, I don't know if that has a future given the power of uh, government unions, but David, your take on policy solutions and what you're hearing well, there at home. Well, J.D., first off, isn't it just stunning that top executives, we need to do special legislation um, so they can be reprimanded or fired. Um, it shows you the design problem we have with large bureaucracies. And uh, we're already starting to run into the situation where the bureaucracy is, you know, um, organizing itself to defend itself instead of trying to help us work to a structural solution. We may find ourselves a year from now having to really think of doing something fairly dramatic to redesign how health care is delivered to our veterans. Uh, as we listen to that from Congressman Schweikert, David Padden, I'm reminded that we had former House Speaker Newt Gingrich, mm -hmm. uh, one of the people who, who uh, helped name me to the Veterans Affairs Committee during, during my time in the Congress. Newt was here last week saying, listen, we're going to have to do something to really restructure VA, and part of that may be just allocating money, funds for, for um, military veterans to step outside the VA system and seek their own kind of health care. Uh, what do you think of that notion uh, and is that a plausible solution? I think conservatives would say that's a great idea, right? Let's take this inefficient bureaucracy, let's pare it down, let's take that money, give it to individuals who will then be empowered to make smart choices about their own health care. That way, if they go to a provider, they feel like that provider really isn't serving their needs, 
then boom, they can just go to another provider. They can make a market choice. The problem is it's hard to think of anything quite so political as paring down a federal bureaucracy and kind of shifting it more into the private sector. And that goes to the point of what, how politicized, how quickly this has become, which is really kind of disturbing because ultimately what we're talking about is two and a half military veterans who are coming back from the Iraq, Afghanistan, and now they're looking for care and they're counting on us to back up the promises we made to them. They put their lives on the line and here we are, are they really gonna get that care. David Schweikert, uh, your current colleague, my former colleague, Louis Gohmert of Texas, says that, uh, that uh, the current situation with the VA mirrors what we're going to see with Obamacare in terms of a government bureaucracy and command and control of medicine. Uh, do you share Congressman yeah. Gohmert's assessment of where the VA is right now? Yeah, um, the congressman from Texas and I were actually talking about this last week on the floor. But look, there's the theory that large bureaucracies ultimately care about the maintenance of the bureaucracy, the power of the bureaucracy, the influence of it, the money, the individuals within it, and the mission, the customer service, the health care of veterans or anyone else becomes secondary. And it's almost the law of all big bureaucracies. It's what happens when you hand your life over to sort of a collectivist organization. Would our veterans be better off if you found a way to maximize their optionality, maximize their individual choice and their ability to go to something that's local, um, specialized, and fits their needs? And, and this is the debate we're going to have to have. But right now we're doing fact-finding. Anyone that's listening to this, if you have data, if you have documents that will help us understand the games or anything that's gone awry, amiss, at the VA, you got to get it to us because that's how we're going to find out what we have to fix. So, Congressman David Panton here, we know already that there are uh, institutions, facilities in Arizona, Wyoming, Colorado. I understand the Inspector General has people on the ground in Texas as well looking into issues. Don't and don't forget Santa Florida. Right. So here's my question. You suggested that there was, we should sort of stay tuned for more yet to come. What do you think the likelihood is, Congressman, that by the time we're done, we're going to see really nationwide malfeasance across maybe many uh, scores of even states or facilities that will really be nationwide? Are we looking at a nationwide scandal here, do you think? Yeah, I'm going to share with you my instinct is, and, and I personally would be surprised if it's not nationwide. And here's how I get there. When we're digging through some of the information, we're finding out that whether it be because of the way the bonus system was designed or the promotion system within the VA, that some of the metrics of, hey, the, we got to be at the 14-day waiting period, we've got to do this, got to do that, that it created sort of a perverse incentive to game the system. Well, that was universal through the entire system from coast to coast. So why would we find one facility may have been gaming those metrics and another one wasn't? So that's my expectation is to see it across the country. And what about the emails, Congressman? Are we expecting that we're going to find out that those have actually been, you know, the lists have perhaps been destroyed, that there's a cover-up underway here? And if that's the case, how high up do, is it likely that that would go? It, it, In other words, if some functionary at the VA does that and say Phoenix, somebody else has to know that they've made decisions to keep two lists or to that's update why, records. But, but you're hitting something. That's why we have our professional researchers. And remember, you have multiple um, investigations going on. You have the VA's own IG, but you also have those of us in the House that have been gathering information for almost a year on this. It's all, you know, it, I know it's only recently sort of broken the press, but we've been chasing this for over a year now and we're digging and digging and digging but we want to get it right and it's also one of those as we've seen in dealing with this administration that when they know we're on to something they basically shut down and start hiding data hiding information hiding emails from us 
Well, unfortunately, we're going to have to shut down the interview, but it's due to time factors. Congressman David Schweikert, we invite you back. David Patton, as always, Thank we you. appreciate your take Thank on you. this. Thank and you. we want to hear from you. You heard Congressman Schweikert say if you have information about misconduct in the VA, he wants to hear from you. So do we. Tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum.